This is a story of ex-Chicago Kingpin, Dante Big Dirk Banks. Born in 1950 in Chicago, Illinois. Big Dirk is widely known as an ex-Chicago Kingpin, who is the father of rap superstar Lil Dirk. According to the feds, Big Dirk was a Chicago Kingpin and a high-ranking member of the Gangster Disciples, who ran a $15,000 a day crack cocaine drug empire in Chicago between 1991 and 1993. According to the feds, between those years of 1991 to 1993, they estimate Big Dirk's drug empire was able to move more than 85 bricks of crack cocaine during those years. According to Big Dirk himself, his story first starts off in the Inglewood neighborhood that's located on the south side of Chicago where he was born and raised. According to Big Dirk, his upbringing was tough growing up because at an early age, he would have to witness his mother suffering from a crack cocaine drug addiction that led to not having much food in the fridge that could feed him and his nine other siblings. And since his mother's addiction was so bad, his family would often have to move from house to house around Chicago. According to Big Dirk, the only time he would live in a stable house during his childhood was when he was living with his grandmother who lived in the Inglewood neighborhood, the same neighborhood he would make a name for himself in. As for Big Dirk's upbringing in the Inglewood neighborhood, he said he would become infatuated with the street life at an early age by watching all the hustlers, prostitutes, and gamblers do their thing while they was on the block. And according to Big Dirk, his favorite thing to do around this time was watch all the gamblers. Because to him, it was like watching TV, because at any given time, he could witness a fight or a shooting happen right before his eyes. According to Big Dirk, around the age of 12, he would have to become the man of the house because at the time, all his older brothers was doing prison time so since all his older brothers was doing prison time, he would have to step up to the plate to help provide for his mother and his other siblings. According to Big Dirk, his becoming a man moment came when he was 13 or 14 years old, when he would ask his older female cousin to put him on so he can help provide for his mother and his other siblings. According to Big Dirk, when he asked his older female cousin to put him on, she would give him an eight ball of coke and this would be the time he went from Dante Banks to Big Dirk. According to Big Dirk, as time went by, with him now being involved in the dope game, he would start making a name for himself and earning a respect from the dudes in his neighborhood who now looked at him as the leader. And according to Big Dirt, as time went on, he would start to make a bigger name for himself because one day while he was at his high school, Paul Robeson High School, a high-ranking member of the Gangster Disciples would come up to his high school looking to recruit dudes from that area to join the GDs. And according to Big Dirt, when the high-ranking member asked dudes from that area who was the most influential dude in that area, everybody would say Big Dirk was. And since everybody said Big Dirk was the most influential dude in that area, the high-ranking member decided to make Big Dirk the shot caller for the GDs in that area. According to Big Dirk, as time went by, he was able to build a large drug trafficking network and also rise in the rankings of the GDs at the same time. And once he was able to climb the rankings of the GDs, he would be invited to meet the chief of the GDs, Larry Hoover. But according to the feds, since Big Dirk was now a high-ranking member of the GDs and also running a $15,000 a day crack cocaine drug empire, he would pop up on their radar and they would start an investigation to bring him down. According to the feds, in the beginning of March 1993, Big Dirk would begin to rely on one of his workers, a man named Alton Mills. It is said Big Dirk had Alton Mills handle the exchange of cocaine and cash with his suppliers. And once the feds found out about this, they would begin to watch Alton Mills. According to the feds, one day while they was watching Alton Mills, the police would get into a high speed chase with Alton Mills, which resulted in him throwing a half brick of cocaine out his window. But according to the feds, even though Alton Mills threw the half brick of cocaine out the window, the police was never able to find it. But according to the feds, the same day of the police chase and the arrest of Alton Mills, Big Dirk would make calls to two different people. It is said during the calls, Big Dirk would talk about the gym bag that Alton Mills had in his possession. According to the feds, Big Dirk referred to the stuff that was in the gym bag as the candy. But unknown to Big Dirk at the time, his phone was tapped by the feds and the police was never able to recover the gym bag. So by Big Dirk referring to the stuff in the gym bag as the candy, the feds knew he was talking about drugs. And according to the feds, four days after they overheard a conversation of Big Dirk having with the two people talking about the candy, the feds would raid a storage unit that was connected to Big Dirk that was located in Lansing, Illinois, 
And according to the feds, once they raided the storage unit, they will find a million dollars in cash and 10 bricks of cocaine. And it is said after the raid of the storage unit, Big Dirk and members of his organization will be picked up by the feds. And according to the feds, on May 11, 1993, while Big Dirk was in jail facing federal charges, he would be recorded on a jail phone telling members of his organization to stay in school, which was known for don't snitch. But after it was all said and done, Big Dirk and other members of his organization will receive life sentences. And according to the feds, the biggest evidence they had on Big Dirk was the testimony of his own blood female cousin, a woman named Tanya Woods. But as for Big Dirk today, he is now a free man who was released from prison in 2019.